Hello everybody and welcome to lesson two of this new unit, Street Dance Styles. Now we're going to start with a starter task today, so if you would write down one to six on a piece of paper or you can type this on a Word document and take a couple of moments to um, pop down your answers, um, pause the video now to do that. Okay, so let's go through the answers. Defining timing. So timing is defined by the use of time or counts when matching movements to sound and or other dances. And that is one of the skills that we learned last lesson. So it's being in time with not only the music, but the people around you as well. Number two, defining coordination. So coordination is the efficient combination of body parts. So are you able to move two or more body parts at the same time? Are you a coordinated person? And we have learnt this skill last lesson, but we're going to continue working on this um, because a lot of these street dance styles require coordination. So this will be constantly challenging throughout the unit. Number three, define dynamics. Dynamics are the qualities of movements based upon variations in speed, strength and flow. Anything that describes how we perform a movement is going to be a dynamic. Which moves us on nicely to number four, so naming two dynamics. So you might have fast, you might have explosive, you might have sustained, you might have soft. Anything that describes how we perform it. Three hip hop grooves. So we did hip hop last lesson. Um, so you could have had the Smurf, the Bart Simpson, the Robocop, uh, the WAP, Steve Martin, the Running Man, Biz Marquee, any of those hip hop grooves. We also watched the 23 hip hop groove um, step video. So you might have named any of those ones as well. Naming three different styles of street dance. So you could have had locking, hopping, grooving, um, not grooving, sorry, <laughs> hip hop, um, house, um, voguing, crumping, breaking, b-boying or b-girling. Um, so just ask for three there. Um, An extra challenge was to create a sentence describing the development of street dance. So last lesson we looked at the origins and the history of street dance. So make sure you are confident in um, yourself of how street dance developed and grew. Um, so hopefully you have a sentence ready um, to share with your teacher um, about the development of street dance. Okay, let's get on to this um, lesson today. So lesson two, learning objectives. We are going to create hip hop choreography using key actions. And learning objective two is to develop the um, solo that we're gonna um, create using the size of movement and pathways. Um, and we're gonna move in a stylistically accurate way. So stylistically accurate, meaning accurate to the style of hip hop. Um, and our literacy focus is to use key hip hop terminology and dance vocabulary when choreographing. Okay, so let's learn some more about hip hop. So hip hop emerged in the Bronx, New York um, from poor social conditions. Early hip hop artists would use this type of music to express, express themselves in the late 1970s. Hip hop is a culture and an art movement that was created by African Americans, Latino Americans and Caribbean Americans. Now hip hop is a term used to define a lifestyle. It is a collective of urban music, dance, art, including graffiti and fashion that was escapism and expression for youths growing up in the rundown areas of their communities. It is a way of life for many and it is promoted positivity to give people a sense of belonging in something they can relate to. Um, so as you can see, again, hip hop is created from society and we can see that it's uh, connected to a lot of different art forms, including music, art, fashion at the time. 
Um, so I need you now to pause the video. You've just heard me read this to you, but pause it now and just read it again. And I'd like you to make uh, three bullet points and three important notes for yourself. Okay, so can you remember the hip hop grooves? So I've popped the names on there for you. So we have number one, the WAP, the Robocop, Steve Martin, the Smurf, the Running Man, Biz Marquee, and Bart Simpson. So I'd just like you to think, do you know what those look like if someone was to actually dance them, if you were to actually dance them? So now might be the time to remind yourself of Miss Pickwell's phrase from last lesson. Hopefully you can just jump up and remember it. If you can't, you're pausing this video and going back onto Miss Pickwell's video to remember her solo phrase. We also want to remind ourselves of the skills. So we have learned about coordination, timing and dynamics. And these are never going to stop being our skills. We need to keep remembering these no matter what street dance style we are going to learn. Okay, so now we are going to describe a motif. So this question is, describe a hip hop motif using actions, space and dynamics. And this question is worth three marks. So let's break down how we're gonna answer this. So it's important to note that a motif is simply a short phrase of movements. Okay, so three or four movements make up a motif. So let's break down how we're going to achieve this. So first of all, it's asking you for your actions. So that's what, what are you actually doing? So my example is, in my motif, I was punching forward with alternating arms whilst bending at the knees. So I've described my action, which is the smurf. So I'm in the hip hop style, which is what the question asks you. So really important that you're describing a hip hop motif. Um, and then we move on to space. So I perform this movement on the spot, facing the front, standing on a medium level. So I'm telling the examiner, the marker, whoever, that um, I'm standing on the spot and I'm facing the front and I'm on a medium level. So I've told them the space that I'm using, my direction and my level. So simply, you could change any of those. You could be standing facing the diagonal, standing facing the back. You might be on the floor, on a low level, performing the Smurf. So you need to decide for yourself what element of space are you using. And next we have the dynamics. So you have to tell me um, how you're performing those movements. So I've put that my arms punch forward with a smooth and continuous dynamic. So I've told the person what I'm doing, my action. I've told them what space I'm doing, so my level and my facing, and I've also told them how I'm performing that, so my dynamics. So that is my example, and I would put all of those three sentences together to make my answer. It is now your turn, so you're gonna pause the video, you're gonna write down the question, so describe a hip hop motif using action, space and dynamics, and then you're gonna write your own answer to this question. Off you go, pause the video now. Okay, let's move on to our practical task. So task one is to create your own hip hop solo. So now is your chance. We've done a bit of theory, we've done a bit of learning about the history and origins. Last lesson we've learned Miss Pickwell's phrase and now you have the chance to create your own solo. So what you're going to do first is watch Henry Link's video. Um, now within this video, really great video, it, sh it shows you how you can dance without any energy, without any performance. And then he shows you what adding energy and adding performance can do to a dance. So have a watch of that video now. Um, the link will be underneath this video or your teacher would have put it in the MS Teams chat. After you've watched Henry Link's video, you are also gonna remind yourself of the 23 hip hop dance steps so that you have extra help when creating your own solo. So please watch those two videos now.
Okay, you're coming back. So you should have watched Henry Link's video now where he showed you what energy and extra performance value can do. And you should have also watched the 23 hip hop dance steps, just to remind you of how many steps that you can use. So let's crack on with your task. Um, so your task is to create your own hip hop solo. Here is the criteria. So you must make sure you include at least four hip hop grooves. Okay, you've just seen 23 on that video, so you just at least need to pick four, but feel free to pick more. Um, you must remember our skills, so you must remember to be coordinated in time and using a variety of dynamics. Make sure you use a bit of repetition. Um, it's always good to repeat uh, certain movements to make them obvious to the audience. And your aim is to create 24 counts worth of this solo. Then you need to rehearse, rehearse and rehearse to make sure this solo is really clear in your head. Pause the video now and off you go. Okay, task two. So you've created a solo and now you need to develop this solo. So, development task, you are going to change the size of movement and then you're going to add or change your pathway. Now, you might be thinking you're not quite sure of what these are, so these are new skills and we're going to go through them. So, you a size of movement means to increase or decrease the size of a movement, very simply. So that means you need to choose a specific movement and either make it bigger or make it smaller and that would be how you've developed it. Next, you will need to add and change a pathway. So, a pathway is a design that's traced in space. So I like to um, think of it as if you were on an aeroplane or if you were a bird, looking down at a dance studio, so on that bird's eye view, and you are looking at what pattern the dance has created on the floor. So that might be a zigzag, the dancer might have moved in a curve, in a circle, or the dancer might have moved in a straight pathway, maybe they just went forward. So your job is to add a pathway. So it might be that you move to one corner of the room doing um, a part of your solo, or it might be that you change direction a couple of times and add a zigzag pathway. This choice is completely up to you. However, you must change one size of movement and add or change a pathway. So take some time to develop your solo now. And once you have completed this, make your way back to the MS Teams call. Well done, everybody.